Hello, this is Sanat here, and welcome back to another Power Rangers Dino Charge review. Today we're taking a look at the Power Rangers Dino Action Pack. Before I move to the figures themselves, I did want to mention the packaging. It's quite nice. It's a nice open box. It displays all six figures really well. Shows the exclusive battle gear. It says Power Rangers Dino Action Pack. It's the same shape as the Super Mega Force sets, which is really good for stores that may still have some. We do get a story here, which does say the story. On prehistoric Earth, an alien entrusted powerful Energems to 12 dinosaurs for protection. But when the dinosaurs went extinct, the Energems were lost. Now an intergalactic bounty hunter named Sledge is determined to reclaim the gems and destroy our planet. A new team of Power Rangers must find the lost Energems and use their dino chargers to power an arsenal of dino-fueled weapons, zords, and megazords to save the world. So we'll begin by taking a look at Dino Charge Red Ranger, or... Dino Ranger Red, or Power Ranger Red, all those names are applicable here. Um, until the show actually premieres, and if we actually have a roll call for the Rangers, we'll get an official name. But for now, it's Dino Charge Red. So we'll take a look at the figure here. Now, I must say that i got to give props to Bandai for the sculpt on these figures. Uh, these look a lot better proportion than figures have in the past. Now, they're still uh, more muscular than, say, like the Japanese uh, suit actor in the series, but, you know, it fits. It looks nice now. They actually really nailed the body sculpt. They don't look steroidy, which has been a problem in the past. As you can see, the head sculpt here is pretty good. Um, I feel like there should be more space between the mouth uh, area and the top of the dino head, but eh, it's all good. It's got the nice uh, dinosaur uh, chomping look. Uh, the chest is fantastic. Uh, i got to give so much prop to Bandai. They don't do paint a whole lot, um, but they have really stepped it up with the 5-inch uh, Ranger figures of Super Mega Force and Dino Charge to have more paint. And this just looks great. you got the nice yellow uh, chest design. you got the uh, Tyrannosaurus Rex there. You can have the shoulder pad on a separate hinged piece. That's incredible. Um, then all throughout here, the silver. And the silver on the back, which is show accurate. So that's pretty nice. Um, I do think that the yellow chest design thing is pretty neat. Also, it's a, it's a dinosaur head. There's the eye, and there's the nose, and there's the teeth. The belt is painted silver, so uh, all the yellow and black detail that would normally be there on the dino com uh, isn't. But, alas, it's pretty good. Um, there is a little bit of uh, slop around the edge of the belt along the all sides, but i got to give them credit for at least painting the belt. A single color. I think having a little yellow and black paint in there would have been really sloppy looking because I don't think that's very really good at a manufacturing level um, for a mass produced item like this. The hand, back of the hands aren't silver as well. That's the only real missing details. The rest of the gloves are silver. The boot cuffs are silver. Everything else is really, really well painted. I am super impressed with the figure as a whole. Speaking of super things, let's compare him to last year's Super Mega Force Red. And you can see he is a little taller. Now, this is not a bad thing. Uh, I mean, the Dino Charge Rangers are just a little taller than the Super Mega Rangers, whatever. Um, there you can see there is a slight height difference. Um, so, there is that. Now, moving him out of the side, uh, off to the side, because we're going to review him later um, in a different video. I do want to bring in this uh, thing here, which is the weapons. Ah. Um, as you can see, we have a Dino Saber and a Dino Charge Morpher. So we'll take a look at the Dino Saber first. Uh, both weapons are cast in this slightly obnoxious uh, green color. It's not glow-in-the-dark. It's not really yellow. They were originally yellow on the prototype pictures. They are this kind of uh, awkward off-lime green thing. But I'm okay with that. Uh, there's no paint on them. And not even the Super Mega Force weapons had paint. But then some of the Legendary Rangers had paint. But look at all the paint here. All the paint on the figure took away all the paint budget because they wanted to make the figure look nice and then not so wor much worry about the weapons. And that's okay with me. Um, so he's got a Dino Saber. You can hold it in either hand. Um, you just give it to him here. So that's pretty neat. And you also have the Dino Charge Morpher, uh, which is also a gun weapon which is that same green color. You notice might have, it has a peg on here, uh, and you might have noticed there's a hole there. Uh, this is not something that's in the series, as far as we know, unless, like, American footage, they can suddenly do this. Um, 
But you can peg on the Dino Charge Morpher and holster it on the belt. That's really cool. Uh, my biggest complaint with the Cure Eager's shoot designs was that their weapons just kind of came out of nowhere. And they had a holster when they were in civilian mode, but when they got to range reform, they, they never actually were able to holster their Gabu revolver. So you can put the Dino Charge Morpher right there on the belt, which is really cool and does free up a hand if you only want to use the sword and not want to lose the Morpher. But we'll have them pose like this for now. And overall, the weapons are pretty neat. Now something I didn't go over was the articulation. <laughs> I usually do that in the reverse order. Oh well. The articulation on these guys is good. Uh, not the best, but it's good. Uh, you got a ball joint, uh, not a ball joint, but a 360 neck joint that is blocked by the shoulder pad. You have outward shoulders with this moving out of the way. Thank you, Bandai. This little bit of engineering makes everything better. 360, it's it's a pin socket, pin disc shoulder, actually. Uh, so you got an elbow joint here. It's a little loose on this one. Uh, you got a wrist joint. That's not a wrist joint. It's a, it's a club joint. You got hips, you got knees, and you got boots. Um, so you can get some wide variety of poses um, with these guys. Now, balancing them is kind of tricky, but I've found that it's easier to balance the Dino Charge Rangers than the Super Mega Force figures. So that's pretty nice. And of course, we have to do this pose because I have all three of them. We have to show them all together. The Dinosaur Ranger teams together. And in this perspective, it makes Dino Charge Red look shorter, even though he's taller. But there you go. If you were somehow able to find a Dino Charge Red Ranger, because there's a whole story behind how I got mine, um, then you can complete this team pretty easily, since I've seen Mighty Morphin Red a lot of places. And overall, it does look really cool. Um, I just wish I could do this with the six Rangers, or with any of the other Rangers, but since there's no legendary figures for Dino Thunder beyond the red, kind of leaves that to a thing we can't do. But overall, Dino Charge Red Ranger is quite awesome. Here we have the Dino Charge Black Ranger. Power Ranger Black, Dino Black Ranger, Dino Ranger Black. There's a lot of names floating around for the Rangers. So what makes them different than Dino Charge Red? First of all, there is a little, you notice here, there is a little uh, little paint gut onto the silver uh, from the red there. Minor issue, can't really notice it. That sculpt here is nice. Uh, it's probably better than Red's. I feel like all the, heads, the helmet sculpts uh, for the Rangers are better than Red's. Uh, red's kind of the worst helmet sculpt, but you can see there it looks really nice. Uh, it's got the um, Parasaur uh, head to it. I also like how there's no teeth because it is a uh, herbivore. You can see you got the Parasaur again. You also got the yellow. Uh, the same chest design basically. I just implanted on the figure with the silver. Belt is the same. Uh, the I like how the arms are always an off color of the main color, so it's it's gray and he's black. Um, which is pretty cool. And, you know, paint on the back of the gloves missing, no detailed paint on the belt, but again, minor things I don't really want to complain about, because they're not really... This is a $10 action figure that's 5 inches tall, and that's pretty good, considering the way today's market works. So, other than that, his articulation is the same, uh, his accessories are the same. He has a Dino Saber and a Dino Charge Morpher. We're just going to give him the Dino Charge Morpher, because... Uh, you know, he, he was the bullet brave in Cure Uger. It'll probably be something similar. Um, probably favoring to use a gun as opposed to his other uh, sword weapon or his other weapons that don't have figures yet. Um, but as you can see, you can kind of get him posed. Uh, the lack of ankle joints in these figures does create some posing restrictions. Um, I will say that, but overall it's not bad. You can kind of balance them like that and it looks pretty neat. So let's move on to Dino Charge Blue. So here we have Dino Charge Blue. Another great figure. As you can see the head here, he's got uh, the Stegosaurus, he's got the spines. Again, no teeth because it is an herbivore. The Stegosaurus design on the chest, well done. Um, and I must say that I am super impressed with the sculpt still. I like the darker blue here with the lighter blue on the, the main body. The figure looks really nice. Again, he has the same accessories, so he has a gun and a sword. Um, let's just give him the sword. 
Why not? He's a caveman. He doesn't understand how guns work. I don't know. I'm not going to judge, but I haven't seen the show yet because it hasn't premiered yet. Yeah, this is the trend with reviewing Ranger action figures, if you're new to this. Uh, yeah, they're mostly the same until you get to a female figure. But the next one's not female, so let's go to green. So here is Dino Charge Green. Head sculpt is fantastic. It's a Velociraptor, so it can have teeth. I love the way the helmet looks on this. I've always liked this helmet design. As you can see, the Raptor uh, symbol there. Nice painted chest. No paint defects on this guy at all, and that's wonderful. Um, silver on the back. The boots. The green is kind of slightly off from the show color, but yeah, it's not really too much of an issue. And then the arms are green, so that's pretty neat. He also has a sword, which the way the hand is sculpted, and this is the same sculpt for all of them, the way the hand is sculpted is it's perfect for pulling off his signature uh, backhanded slash poses from Kiryuger that seem to be translating over to Dino Charge based on how the spin action Green Ranger figure is having him hold this, the sword the same way. So I'm just really happy that how fantastic that looks. Uh, the wrist is kind of bent in a position to where holding all the weapons, it can hold the sword backwards like that for the backhanded slash, and it looks good. It looks really good. Props, Bandai. And here we have Dino Charge Pink, our only female so far, and she's the first African-American Pink Ranger. Good job, Saban. It only took you 20 years, but hey, I'll take it. Um, it's awesome how diverse this cast of Rangers is. Now, you'll notice something. Um, on my figure, her, her head's slightly turned. Uh, in the package, she's at the edge of the box, and so her head's turned like this. So it doesn't look out of place, but then when you turn it straight, uh, yeah, you might want to watch out for this. The neck is on a rubbery connection, so it can bend slightly. So she is looking a little confused sometimes. That's okay. Uh, Triceratops helmet, so herbivore, no teeth. You got the nice painted chest design. Uh, the belt, the skirt, and the boots, and the gloves are all nicely painted. Uh, she did not lose any paint. Being the only female figure, this is the only time we've gotten this body sculpt so far. And that does lead to some cool things. Like, first of all, her head turns all the way because her, her shoulder pad's smaller. So, that's awesome. Her arms, 360. Elbows, ri uh, not wrists. I keep saying wrists, but it's, it's gloves. She's got hip articulation that's slightly restrictive, uh, knees, and boots. So she has the same amount of articulation as the males. Her skirt just prevents her legs from moving too far. That's okay, because you kind of don't want to move her legs too much, because her feet aren't designed for that. Um, but overall, I'm really impressed, because, you know, I've, I've, I've experienced the Jungle Fury toy line, where yellow had less articulation than the males. Um, or some of the other toy lines have had that. I really appreciate that Bandai is making an effort here with this figure to make sure that she has as much articulation as the males. Now, she can't use some of it, but she she she's pretty good. Now, her weapons are the same as the others, which is a problem because her hands are smaller. Um, and that means she holds the sword fine, but the Dino Charger Morphers get kind of a... It, it kind of, it's kind of a halfway thing. It's better just kind of leave it on the belt. It actually pegs onto her belt better than in the others because of her smaller waist. Um, and overall, I'm, I'm quite impressed uh, with Dino Charge Pink here. She is the first uh, female ranger that I did get from this new 5-inch scale. So I don't have anyone to compare her to, but I must say I'm impressed. She is a little, uh, still a little thin in the, uh, the waist, but... Considering this is Bandai of America, I'm impressed. It looks more human than, say, like the In Space Female Rangers. Or even the Automorphing Female Rangers. Google search those and see those things. Anyways, let's go on to our only villain. Here is the best figure in the set. Fury. Based on Juden Sentai Kyoryuger's Dogold. And... I am super impressed with this figure. Typically, when we've gotten villain figures in the past, like Super Mega Force's uh, Prince Vicar, the articulation is less than the Rangers. They can do less things, and their posability is highly restricted. 
This guy, on the other hand, can do more than the Rangers. He has more points of articulation. Plus, his sculpt and paint are fantastic. This figure is going to be only one per case, as far as we can tell, for the future. That's okay, I think, because a lot of paint work is done on this guy. Most of it is red, is this this red and gold plastic, um, not not gold plastic syndrome plastic, hopefully. Um, but all this painted chest detail all throughout this piece here, um, all the the extra new molded pieces that can't be reused for anything, it's awesome. I really like the sculpt on the guy. With the articulation, the neck does swivel 360. Articulation though, shoulders are on the pin discs, so they do move. They do go only about that far, but as you can see, you can raise both his arms, and there's no clanging with the head. Um, even if you turn it, you're still okay. You have 360 shoulders. You have elbows. You have a uh, you don't have a wrist swivel here, um, unfortunately, so it kind of leaves with the claws. Will always be this way, but you do have this swivel here. Uh, no waist joint as per usual, but his hips move out. They move forward. The skirt is cut so he can move his uh, legs. He's got a knee. He's got upper um, thigh thigh swivel thigh swivel. That's a, below the knee thigh swivel. It's kind of weird with Bandai figures. But the most astounding thing, and it's something I've not seen in a Power Ranger figure ever. Ball jointed ankles. I'm not kidding. This isn't just like a forward and back joint like we had on the Jungle Fury figures. This is a full on ball joint. These are fantastic. This means you can plop him down and he's set. You don't have to worry about, oh no, is he going to fall over because half his foot? No, because it just it sets into place like that. You can have his ankles pointing out in opposite directions and plop him down and he's fine. Ball jointed ankles is a thing that Power Rangers figures need. With the way their the figures are proportioned, by the way, it comes with a wicked cool sword. Uh, by the way, the Power Rangers figures are proportioned. They do need extra balance. This guy in particular, having a lot in the top and kind of not so much in the legs, having ball jointed ankles is fantastic. If you're not gonna even pick up any of the Rangers. Get Fury. He's just great. The final piece of the set is the exclusive battle gear. This is the Dino Spike weapon. I'm taking that name off the fact that the thir number 13 Dino Charger is the Dino Spike Charger. That's the one used for this weapon. This is a combination of pink, green, blue, black, and reds individual weapons that uh, require a special power-up. And those will be getting separate figures later on in line. So we won't see the individual versions of these weapons for a while. But... This is a one solid piece. This is a you know, solid piece. I mean, that's not coming apart. Uh, the weapons don't separate. It is one solid piece with a nice long handle of the Dino Spiker or the Kenturo Spiker if you're from Kyoryuger. Um, it's got a nice little drill tip at the end. You can see the silver tip is painted. The rest of it's mostly black, but I do like how they paint each individual dino head. Um, this is the exclusive piece. This is the reason you get the set if you're a collector. If you're a kid, you probably don't care about this as much, but this is one of the main selling points of the set. Um, if you spend all your money at Toys R Us, get the set, um, as opposed to buying the figures individually like Target, you get this. And this is a nice little bonus piece. Um, it's very similar to the one that the Super Mega Cannon coming with the Legendary Action Pack from last fall. But... It's just a single piece, and this does lead you to being able to pull off certain poses. And you can pull off this relatively close uh, final attack pose that I can't really pull off because lack of ankle joints. Overall, the Power Rangers Dino Action Pack, and therefore the first wave of figures, is fantastic. Well, I am super happy. Uh, it feels like Super Mega Force was the step in the right direction with the way the figures were sculpted, and Dino Charge was finishing that steps, making really great Power Rangers figures. Not to mention Fury is just awesome. Um, overall, I'd recommend all six figures, whether you get them individually or in the pack with the Dino Spiker. It's up to you, but I highly recommend all of them. Uh, there's not a single bad figure in this set, and that's really great. And I really look forward to where this line's going to go. I'm super excited for Dino Charge, so you can expect, expect more Dino Charge reviews. In fact, you can probably expect the Dino Charge Morpher soon, since I, I got one of those. 
And you can expect another video uh, coming down the pipeline that will be featuring all these Super Mega Force Legendary Ranger figures in one giant review. I want to do a retrospective of how they pulled that line off. And also check out HeroTaku.com for all your Power Rangers toy news and more. And Tungsten's sound saying, goodbye.